usually you see me sitting here doing a political rant or something like that. I guess this is similar to a political rant. I am talking about important matters, I guess. What I'd like to talk about today is Caitlin Cousineau. If you haven't heard about her, then you're lucky. Caitlin Cousineau was sadistically murdered November 12th and 13th, 2005 in the county of Midland, Ontario, Canada by people she had befriended. I guess the best place to start is with the beginning. Caitlin Cousineau died when she was 25, but emotionally she was about the age of a 12 or a 13 year old. She was a special needs person. She was handicapped. Rather remarkably, she passed high school, graduated high school, married another special needs person and had a baby. But without proper support, they were not allowed to keep the baby. I'm unaware as to whether the child was a handicapped person too. Uh, I can't give you that information. I can't tell you whether it found a good home. We can only hope that it did. Uh, because its mother is not there to look for it. So shortly after the birth and the removal of the child, her marriage to the other special needs person fell apart. He apparently had a lot of problems too. He was a cutter or a drug user. I don't know how much support they would have needed to keep the child, and I don't know how it would have went. I can't make those kind of speculations. But it sounds to me like Caitlin Cousineau had kind of a remarkable life. Graduating high school, getting married, and having a child. For most people, that's really quite an accomplishment. So I think it is an accomplishment for her too. But the story turned sad very quickly. The child was removed. The marriage dissolved. She met a woman, Susan Belog, and made friends with her and moved in with her. Shortly after that, Susan Belog made friends with Paul Brady and moved into his house, rented his house, and became friends with him. And he had a friend, Matt Sight. So apparently Paul Brady didn't care much for the company of Caitlin Cousineau and took offense to her and started abusing her very quickly. I don't know how long the verbal abuse and the slapping lasted. There's been reports. Maybe a week, maybe a month, I don't know. And I don't know how long that they kept her in the basement, handcuffed, naked, and tortured her with a blowtorch. I don't know how long. But I do know that every picture of Caitlin Cousineau I've seen, she's smiling. I'm a horror writer. I have some of my stuff published on the internet, so I have a pretty strong stomach. But the more I think about it, her with the emotional wherewithal of a 12 or a 13 year old, being so horribly betrayed after so many tragedies in her life by somebody she befriended. Susan Belog betrayed her, and that's basically it. Susan Belog should have called the police, should have done something, but she didn't. And we can all make up our own reasons why, for her own self-protection. But the end result of it is, is that Kathleen Cousineau is dead, sadistically tortured to death, November 12th or 13th, 2005 in Midland County. And I wanted you to know about it. When I see her name in the paper or think about her, I find myself close to tears because I have a good imagination. And I can see her in that damp, dark basement, tortured and no longer smiling at all. I hope this bothers you as much as it bothers me. And I hope Paul Brady and Matt Sight never get out of jail.